welcome 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 to the first of what we hope is going to be many episodes of the complete nutrition show aka who the hell needs food now what's that all about you say is it all about quinoa and avocados not quite we are fans of the various milk uh, shakes powders proteins drinks bars that all claim to provide uh, all your nutritional requirements in a handy convenient form sometimes known as meal replacement products, uh, perhaps erroneously, sometimes known as complete nutrition products. You may have heard of brands like Huel, Soylent, Mana, Jimmy Joy, and many, many others. Well, that is what this show is all about. And uh, even if any of that means nothing to you, uh, you should stay tuned as we will explain all these things and discuss all things complete nutrition products, What's in them? Uh, are they any good? Do they work? And what are the latest innovations, trends, and fads in all things complete nutrition? But, ladies and gentlemen, but, 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 before all that, uh, we best introduce ourselves uh, so you know who we are. I am uh, Clive Illenden. If you're watching my YouTube channel, you'll know who I am. Uh, YouTube forward slash Clive Villanden if you're listening. And I've been reviewing uh, meal replacement products for nearly five years, maybe a little bit more since they sort of first started coming on the market. Um, I read about Soylent in its early days, which is one of the first ones in the US. Couldn't get it in the UK. But uh, one of the first, well, a couple of the first ones in the in Europe was uh, a company for called Huel. Uh, and uh, manner, and I tried those um, early doors because I was fascinated by this idea that you sort of could get all your nutrition and health without having to think about it. And I was playing um, and streaming a lot of games at the time, and sometimes I would be doing that all day. Uh, and you sort of get into bad habits eating wise, or if you're at work uh, in an office and you pop out and you get the meal deal, which consists of a sandwich, a bag of crisps and a drink, and you have that every day. And this seemed the perfect way to make sure without even thinking, you know, I don't, wouldn't have to think about it, but to make sure I was getting all my sort of bodily nutritional requirements in the most simplest form possible. Uh, and that's sort of what got me hooked as it were, got me into it. And I've been fascinated by them ever since I've been reviewing them. Uh, and you know, the, it's a major part of my YouTube channel. So that's where I'm coming from. But it's not just me, of course. Joining me here, introduce yourself, sir. Uh, my name is Anyout. Uh In England, they used to call me Annie because obviously my name is not easy to pronounce in English. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, the quote unquote expert of uh, meal replacements or complete foods, as uh, some like to call it. And I am the owner of the website latestfuels.com. Uh, See the button yes. there on the on the tag latestfuels.com. Make sure you check it out. And yeah, I've been trying out meal replacements and writing about them now since 2018. I was introduced to meal replacements through a friend. Uh, we'll expand into that later on. But yeah, now I do my life by trying to explain as. Uh, as well as I can, and as in as in much detail as I can to my readers, everything about every product that exists, uh, every complete meal replacement product that you can think of, be a bar, be a ready to drink or a powder, which is mo which most of them are. I try. You'll find the review. I know Clive does m many of the, my the reviews, and I do many of reviews in the written form. So I always aim to be impartial and factual. That's usually the the way I go for, sometimes my reviews are a little bit too long and they can be a bit of a tough read, but uh, I try to give all the information possible to the reader so that, uh, you know, then you can make a safe choice and have all the guarantees that, you know, this product is going to work for you, that it doesn't have any allergens that you might not want, or that it has the amount of protein that you want or the ingredients that, you, you know, they fit you best. So you can find all the, all the reviews in latest fields. And yeah, I, I mean, I approach Clive because I know he has tried uh, many products and, uh, you know, it's a topic that I don't hear about very often. I used to run a survey every year and when I ask people, why do, why are you not, you know, why you're not trying meal replacements or why do you not have um, complete food products? Uh, the, the main argument was, 
well, I never heard about them or, you know, I don't know enough yeah. about them. So that points out either we're doing a bad job or there's not enough content around this topic. So why not create a podcast where people can listen, people can inform themselves about the latest trends of, you know, meal replacements. We'll try to also cover some specific at some point maybe, and also answer the, you know, the most normal questions that people have about these products. Right. Yeah, it's certainly a, it's a it's a certainly growing market, um, and uh, yeah, and it, and it's, and latestfuels.com is probably the most comprehensive um, <laughs> source of all things uh, meal replacement and complete nutrition products. Uh, very very thorough, so highly recommend uh, that. So make sure you check out uh, latestfuels.com if you want to see what's out there. And trust me, it's not just shakes. Uh, as we will yeah. delve into and talk about um, every week, uh, it's mm-hmm. gone. M- it's gone far beyond uh, your the initial your, premise of the yes, shake. Yes, the initial <laughs> premise of basically a shake. It adds, you know, add a powder, a bit of water, and uh, there you go. Bob's your uncle. It's gone beyond that. But um, anyway, mm-hmm. intros out of the way. Uh, in today's show, uh, we'll be looking at a number of things. We'll be looking at a brief history of the products. Um, how we first uh, discover these products and our first impressions. Um, we'll also be looking at what does complete nutrition actually mean when we say a complete nutrition mm-hmm. product? Is there a difference between that and the term meal replacement, uh, exactly. et cetera? Uh, and also just the general perception. Um, and Annie mentioned it there, you know, that when you ask somebody about it, people have different kind of perceptions and concepts of what it is. Is it real food? Is it diet food? Is it like a protein or whey shake? Isn't that what bodybuilders use? Or the various comments I get on some of my YouTube videos like, who the hell eats this artificial rubbish? Um, That's a common (laughs) comment you often see sometimes. Uh, We'll also be looking at what we've been testing recently and Mm -hmm. all the latest uh, products, developments and news in the world of complete nutritional products. products so hopefully stay tuned and you will hopefully be as i like to say on my youtube uh, informed educated and entertained in all <laughs> things complete nutritional products so uh let's start at the beginning uh why don't we have a look at a brief history of the products um any let, let well, us you know cast your knowledge upon us uh let's i mean i think when when we talk about the term meal replacement almost anybody will answer you with one or two words which is herbalife and slim fast yeah and i think uh i think it's it's good to start there and i would call it the dark ages in, in, in to you know to refer to herbalife and slim fast uh this for i think for today's standards they're ter- terrible products yeah. with tons of rubbish on them and their main goal is to be cheap, or in terms of Herbalife, maybe some would argue it's a pyramidal scheme, and you know they're trying to skim as much money as possible from the clients. I won't go into that. But yes, uh, SlimFast was created in 1977, so it's been 40 years now, over 40 years. So you know it's it's been a while, and you can still see it. It's well uh, in Europe, in the US, yeah, in the stores. You have in to have, local yep. shops. Yeah, they have multiple. Uh, multiple flavors, multiple lines now, like keto, low carb, high protein. Uh, I actually tried it recently uh, for the first time. Uh, Very, very sweet shake, very sweet. It's very, I can see why it could get popular, but anyways, like Herbalife came in 1980. And you know, when I think they didn't coin the tell meal replacements, but definitely it must be one of the most well-known brands out there, unfortunately. For the brands that the brands came out after so i would call them like the dark ages and their their other products out there but i would call i would say that in 2013 there was a renaissance of yeah. these products is when there was a spin-off to what the, these products were for and who they were for whereas before they were mainly targeted to people that they were t- dieting or needed really really cheap nutrition uh soylent came along uh yeah. This uh this guy called Rob Reinhardt, uh he's uh he was, he 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 lived in the U.S. and he was uh very very interested in the utopia of you having the opportunity to eat with as little as possible. Like in his yeah. utopia, you would eat a pill, 
and yeah. you have all the food you needed uh, for the day. Unfortunately, it's like, uh, it, like machine, like treating us like a machine, uh, yeah. and then finding the most refined fuel to to fuel that that machine. And that that he he was um, so Soylent was really Soylent was really the birth of what we're talking about uh isn't it really in this show and what we we yeah, kind of yeah. focus on and and less so that idea of the you know the more you know outdated sort of meal replacement products which as you say were sort of based you know sort of diet shakes for housewives and stuff like that mm -hmm. back in back in the day whereas soylent the approach that um you know the guy took was completely different it was as you say how can i you know what is the most economical way in terms of you know, sort of time and effort to get mm -hmm. the maximum nutrition and and you know everything I body body needs without having to cook and prepare everything and 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 that's it's really from there that things sort of changed and the trend sort of started and that's the area yep. that we're sort of looking at, isn't it? I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it's not only about you know having us the minimal effort, but it's to have everything you needed. His Rob's focus was looking at the science, learning all the science and having everything the science said you needed in a powder format or in a format for what he could consume. So he knew he was consuming optimal food for himself. He was looking for an optimal food. So he was not longer looking to diet. He was no longer looking to like ration. He was looking to make a food that it was really good, really efficient uh, for himself. And that's where Soylent came into uh, 2013. And uh, at the time, it was the most uh, fun crowded. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I remember there were news about the biggest, them. There were one articles of the biggest about them. crowdfunding things, you know, at the time, wasn't it? I mean, it, and it appealed yeah. to a certain. So he was very much from sort of, the, as I understood it, it appealed to, you know, coming from Silicon Valley, where there are a lot mm -hmm. of, um, you know, programmers, software programmers who kind of sat mm -hmm. at their computer or in a dark room, whatever, all day programming away. And then forgetting to eat or or ordering in a pizza and just mm -hmm. basically not leaving their desks and therefore having bad diets and eating unhealthily and i think he wanted to how can i sort of remain at my desk yeah but make yep. sure <laughs> I, you know as you say i'm getting the optimal nutrition that i need so i can mm -hmm. keep you know programming doing whatever i i do and that's and that's sort of and he and he approached it you know scientifically uh, and yeah, that, he that um, he came up with a formula in his uh, in his room. Uh, reading, you could I, I love this. Uh, I love the ingredients. These ingredients you can buy separately, and even nowadays there's a big uh, DIY community for Soylent. So you can make there's recipes that you can share, and you can make your own recipe. So, what, so but, what, from scratch, make your own stuff from scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah. Like the powders, they're quote unquote fairly easy to make. And uh, you know, he made his own formula, optimized it over a different period. And when went to kick when he went to kick it started, it really touched something. It really reached somewhere. And as you say, like there was a group of people who were this, this is what exactly what they were looking for. And that's why it was so successful. It was incredibly successful. Not even not even then and in the money he raised to create Soylent. But also nowadays when I speak to new founders of new products, they tell me, Yeah, yeah, the first time I heard about it, it was Soylent. Uh, I was yeah. talking to the Italian company, the founders were, yeah, we went to LA and we heard about Soylent and we were really intrigued. And then we brought the idea to Italy and, you know, he really, really, you know, yeah. revolutionized in certain He's sense. He's a, cat you know? a catalyst, I think, for every everybody mm -hmm. else and every every else's sort of attempts at it. So, yeah. yeah, Soylent, uh, it's uh, one of the biggest companies still. They have a lot of art ready to drink products ready, and we'll discuss them at some point, I'm sure. And it's, you know, it's one of the big players in the United States. At the same time, I know Mana was uh, starting to be created. I think somewhere probably between the start of 2014 to the end of 2014. Uh, you can read an article, I think, at in, in the end of in December 2014. They had one year already going on. Uh, yeah, so, that's, so I kind of looked at the dates and I just thought mm -hmm. they, they almost predated it. Or, you know, were they working on, you know, so were Mana? Uh, which mm -hmm. are you know based in the Czech Czech Republic, Czech Republic yeah, yeah based yep, in the right. Czech Republic. Um, yeah, whether they were working on it coincidentally in parallel because they seem to be slightly ahead of the very similar in timing. Yes, curve, I think they yeah. were working in parallel. 
in terms of like you know they both came with a very similar product actually because yeah. the original mana and the original soylent are very similar in terms yeah. of ingredients and yeah. nutrients and everything and yeah as you say uh yeah i think they came up very parallel i wouldn't say they copy each other yeah. or you know i think uh, i think like even there's a story how the uh, the the, no, the pneumatic was uh, invented at the same time in the U.S. and in the France. Uh, you know, uh, you have Michelin's and Dupont, yeah. I think, or whatever. So uh, you know, sometimes it happens. And yeah. I think it might have been something that it came up in parallel. And they both some of the oldest. And Hugh was straight after Hugh also founded in 20, 2014. Jimmy Joy also one of the oldest founded in 2014. I think Q, another European brand, probably founded around that. So you see that how like Soylent in 2013 right. sparked something. Uh, I think the the success of the kick, the, you know, the the crowdfunding, obviously, you know, it's the yeah. best from a just from a business point of view. It's one of the best ways to go. Well, there's definitely a market for this. Yeah. And the thing with Soylent is you couldn't get it in the UK when it when it first launched. Nope. Exactly. So or Europe really. So mm -hmm. uh, there was obviously a golden opportunity across you know the uk and across europe for somebody to come up with their own version of of that yeah, kind I mean, of, of this this new product as it were i mean there's a there's another way you could uh you can see the influence a lot of this product at the start they were called something lent so jimmy joy used to be called joy lent back yeah, in the joy day lent. probably yeah yeah, yes. yeah yeah i remember uh, that. I got that. <laughs> uh yeah. there was a there were another few in the us called excellent i forgot some of some of the names but a lot of the, a lot yeah. of the companies were called you know whatever lent uh so yes uh, that was the influence Solent had and most of the 1.0s they were in, ingredients wise very similar to Solent. so yeah i would say that kick started and now we have a lot of european brands some uh, in the united states you have many brands as well so yeah this going here now where we are where you have from that powder that you could mix with water to have ready to drinks, have bars. Now we have a burger that I'm sure we're yeah. going to discuss about. Yeah. And yeah, it's going crazy. It's going crazy. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, that's really interesting. So let, so, so just, uh, we touched on it. We both touched on it briefly, but when you first, um, you know, when, when did you sort of first discover it or try it? What was the first thing you sort of tried and what was your sort of thoughts or expectations? Uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, I think, uh, my first contact with meal replacements was Hugh at the time I lived in the UK in Bath, yeah. as you can see, uh, <laughs> the rugby team is not doing very well, but you know, <laughs> go and support. And, uh, yeah, I, I remember my friend who was a IT, IT guy. As you yeah. would say, the IT crowd has been still, and it's still like one of the biggest consumers of this kind of product. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he said, "Oh, you need to try this. You know, it's a, it's a mirror replacement. You have you have it in a shake, and uh, you know you'll like it because you got you have protein shakes." And I was like, <laughs> "I told I told him, yeah, I like protein shakes, but protein shakes don't deprive me of food, and I like food more than the shakes, and you know." <laughs> yeah. I like the shit. I like to eat. Yeah. So yeah, it's not something I wanna I wanna have. Or it, my first impression was it's not something I'm gonna ever gonna have. It's kind of ridiculous. I enjoy food too much. So <laughs> what about you? Yeah. Well, for me, um, it was very similar. You know, I'd read uh, like yourself. I'd sort of been reading about Soylent and stuff, and I just thought, you know, the just that idea of uh, as I mentioned that optimal as you said, you know, the optimal uh kind of you know requirement nutritional requirements that, that you need in the most simple form and like i just mm -hmm. you know i was quite i'm quite lazy when it you know you just ask my kids i'm no chef put it that way uh, the, <laughs> it will, it will uh, attest to that I have no, no problem about that um and so like you know so i have periods of time when you know the kids aren't around and stuff and it's just me and then i'm thinking well i'm gonna at the time i was streaming as well like uh, game streaming and stuff like that mm -hmm. or working creating content and i sort of get lost in what i'm doing and um i just thought this would be ideal because i you know as i say I, you can forget about it you can just you know know that you can just have this shake it will fill you up it will mm -hmm. feed you these, these aren't yep. diet shakes because they're giving you 500 calories for a lunch yeah, yeah, yeah. or for a breakfast so it's not it's not like oh it's only 200 calories it's giving you a proper meal uh but it's giving you all the essential micro and macronutrients that your body needs in the perfect amount so you don't have to think yeah. about it and so it was just that that concept in the same way that it appealed to so many other people 
uh, I think, you know, that appealed to me. And Huel was the first one, I, you know, when I was sort of trying to think, well, how do I get Soylent? And yeah, Soylent yeah. went through, had its own issues in the US with, the, as I understand it, with the food, um, you know, the Drug and yes. Food Administration and in Canada and stuff like that. They had issues, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the closest thing, as you say, the first things I discovered was, was manna, which seemed <laughs> yeah. to be doing exactly the same thing as Soylent and, and mm -hmm. Huel. Uh, which sort of seemed to have its sort of its own spin on it, you know, natural products yep. and stuff like that. Different. So slightly, slightly different spin on it. And, you know, being a UK based company, I thought I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. Cause it, it seemed to sort of, as I say, it seemed to hit, hit the mark in terms of, um, you know, being something very useful. And as I say, the other thing is, you know, when you, when you work in an office, say, you know, I work in the city and then you, you know, you're just popping out to the sandwich shop every day. Yeah. It's yeah. not, you know, it's not the healthiest way. And it just, um, it just kind of, to me, it just kind of made sense that like, as I say, it's almost like set and forget, you know, I don't have to worry. It, I could eat, you know, it doesn't mean I don't have it all the time. And we'll talk about this, you know, about w whether you, it will come, you know, replace yeah, everything. Um, but you know, I knew that then it didn't really matter what I had in the evening necessarily. Mm -hmm. Because I knew yep. that at least <laughs> one meal a day was, mm -hmm. you know, optimal when it came to nutrition and and, mm -hmm. and vitamins. And then, of course, that just, you know, um, it just sent me on a path of discovery. Uh, as, <laughs> and, and because, as you said, because new products were coming on board at the same time. Yes. Uh, we've seen, you know, and innovations were happening all the time. Um, and so, you know, initially I did. I did a, a review on my YouTube channel way back when, you know, probably had less than a hundred subscribers and stuff like that. Well, and, right and the, yeah, not like now, you know, we've got five K now, but, uh, <laughs> um, but, um, you know, and I did a heel one and it seemed to go quite well because it was topical, you know, other yes. people were trying it. Um, so, um, and I've just been fascinated by, and I, but I, I also use them. That's the thing. It's not just a yes. fascination. Um, the yes. reason that I'm sort of passionate about it or talk about it or, or review them is because they they serve a purpose in my life. It's not, you know, exactly. it, 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 you know, I use them all the time for different reasons. You know, you'll have the shakes. Mm -hmm. I usually have when I'm at home, uh, you know, obviously a lot of working at home at the moment. So obviously I'm at yeah, home for everyone. And, and I'll, yeah. And I'll grab the, sh uh, the shakes, uh, put them in my Nutribullet, whiz it up. And that's my lunch and I carry on working, you know, from home. But equally, if I'm going out, um, I took I took my my son out for a birthday treat and we had to sort of travel quite far. So I just grabbed a couple of bottles of the Huel stuff that I happened to have in the fridge, shoved them in the back yeah. of the car, knowing that, OK, I mean, I'm going to go probably take him to McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken because that's what he wants. <laughs> later on. But when I'm driving home. If I'm yeah. starving or something, which I did, I mm -hmm. can say to him, can you just uh, give that bottle a shake and, you know, unscrew the top, give it to me. And then I can kind of have a meal Very while I'm driving, good. you know, and, yeah. and the same with the bars you could throw, you know, or you're running late for Very work handy. or something. So mm -hmm. they're, they're practical. They do the job. Yes, and, that's, and that's, yes, and that's, and that's how I kind of, um, uh, dis, uh, discovered them, which is, which is interesting. So, um, and I think you touched on it in the, in the history there, um, you know, there's a sort of maybe there's a sort of a misconception around uh, what we mean by complete nutrition, um, and and in a way, the difference between, as you said, before Soylent products before Soylent, and yeah. this idea of meal replacement products, and mm -hmm. and a complete nutrition uh, product, which is what I try to refer to them. You know, when I'm reviewing yeah. them and stuff, I try to say complete nutrition product to make that distinction so what do you think you know um you know what what do we mean when we say complete nutrition product um yeah i think uh i think it's a common i wouldn't say misconception it's just mere replacement had a meaning beforehand and when you coin it's i think it's technically correct obviously to call the meal replacements because what you're doing is basically replacing one one of your meals with one of these products i think the problem comes from the uh the hidden meaning behind the meal replacements, as we were speaking before, when you say meal replacements, the first thing that will come up to most minds, especially if you're not into the whole ecosystem, is diet. Diet. Yeah. And that's why I think uh, I love the brands and I, the, the one that we've been speaking about a lot, Huel, 
has a push for the term complete food, which seems a healthier term. Yeah. And technically, it might even describe these uh, products better because yeah. their aim is to be nutritionally complete. What do we mean by that? Well, they have all the fats, including the omega-3 essential amino acids that they're lacking in many shakes that they're not complete. Uh, they have all the protein that you need and even more sometimes. And they have carbohydrates with healthy fi- healthy fibers, yeah. plus all the micronutrients, vitamins and minerals that you need all in one shake. And it's so all in they the perfect, usually... yeah, all in the, in, all mm. in the right proportions. So there, there's proportions, sort of a yes, balance exactly. between your carbs, your fats, your proteins and your fibers. And they, mm-hmm. they, they do them all in the right proportion that you should, should have within a say 500 calorie meal or whatever it is. Exactly. So what they usually do is uh, the European brands, we look to uh, the European Food and Safety Administration and there's some guidelines. You need to have 2000 calories for uh, for an adult. That's usually 2500 if you're a male, around 1800 if you're a female. It will vary depending on your age, your weight. You can always check for that. There's a fantastic website that will help you. So they take 2000 standard thing. Um, you know, from 2000, you need to have 45 to 65% in carbohydrates. Usually you can have a bit lower if you want, you need to have around 30%, 20 to 30% in fat and the rest in protein. Obviously those macronutrients can vary. So the, the brands will choose what they feel is the best. They'll have nutritionists on board and they will fine tune the exact details, but yeah, they will contain the right amount of macronutrients as we say, and they also, all this, there's guidelines about, you need to have in a day, you need to have X amount of vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, iron, phosphorus, zinc, or whatever. And they will put that as well in the shake. So they take that 2000 calorie, and then they will divide it into four servings or five servings yeah. or whatever. And you know, each serving, you're going to have 25% of what you need in the, in the, in the day, or even more if you, sometimes they're richer in vitamins and minerals to help you out a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think that's what complete food is. It's basically a food that is designed to provide you with everything your body needs per meal. Yeah, it's interesting because if you look at meal replacement on Wikipedia, it says that there was an mm-hmm. EU directive specifically aimed. So this is more at those, uh, you know, slender fast and other kind of products, but mm-hmm. um, specifically stating that, um, you know, there's a list of nutrients that, that if you supply these things, meal replacement products, they a, a list of nutrients they have to provide. You have to. Yep. They can't be less. They have to provide between 200 and 400 food calories of energy, of which mm-hmm. not more than 30 percent from fat. So so, uh, I mean, the products that we discuss, you know, completely meet those requirements and more. Um, yeah, yeah, but sure. but you know the EU as I say brought in this specific directive to make sure that these you know products were at least having some you know were, were containing a minimum level of nutritional value. But um, as you say, the companies that we talk about on here and the products we talk about here uh, are very scientific approach some slightly different I'm very transparent as well yeah, about it yeah, uh, that's yeah. one thing you'll notice with any company when you go to their website yeah. they will tell you everything about the nutrition they'll tell you everything about their nutrition is they'll tell you the breakdown the amount and the reasons for whereas in some of the other products that you might discover they're a bit more shady they don't t- want to tell yeah. you as much or it's hidden somewhere else yeah so I noticed that particularly I mean well actually right most of the ones so the you know Huel uh, and uh, they've got a guy called James Hollier who's a, a, diet, a dietitian and nutritionist um, and uh, he's built like he's like, <laughs> he's, like he's and he's, he's no, uh, I mean he's he's yeah I mean he's, he's probably my age which is quite at the, at the wrong end of life put it that way uh, and uh, he he looks fit as a we used to say fit as a butcher's dog which is an old UK expression but you know <laughs> he looks really um yeah. fit but he knows what he's talking about and he was actually interviewed recently about diet the importance of diet yes, and think. healthy eating mm-hmm. in one of the national papers only this week i think um yeah this i think express. he yes yeah, express so um he tweeted about that so he knows what he's he's talking about and he's mm-hmm. absolutely fundamental to uh fuel and their development and stuff like that and then yeah. when you look at the at bigger m- companies will have a lot of nutritionists on their on the yeah. ranks like uh, Huel has a few uh one for the rt one or more for the rtd some for the powder yeah. you know 
it's, yeah. they spend a lot of money in the R and D yeah. of these companies. And then I always, I'm always super. So, so they kind of take much more. To me, I go is she'll take a much more sort of, uh, you know, uh, nutrition diet approach. And then I look at Manor, mm-hmm. and and they almost sort of take a more, a slightly more sciency approach. It feels like you, you know they've been kind of measuring out test tubes and stuff like that, just to get it <laughs> kind of perfect. You look at there's a lot of science on their site, but it but it's all good stuff, and it's all backed up. Yeah. And they and as you mentioned, they follow, so uh, they follow the European sort of um, food uh, guidelines, yeah, uh, guidelines, and those guidelines change. And uh, Mana then change up their recipe to make sure that they are hitting those requirements uh, that, you know, the European Food Agency is saying you must, you know, a this is healthy eating, a minimum mm-hmm. of this, you know, these vitamins, a minimum of these proteins, a minimum of these, you know, fibers and fats. And they make sure that they at least, you know, hit those minimum requirements and more uh, in, in each of their updated recipes. Um, uh, with yeah, even so, farther. Yeah. If you go to the U.S., they even change the formulas to meet with the criteria that the U.S. requires. Like, uh, uh, vitamin A requirements in Europe and uh, in the U.S. are different. For example, and I yeah. know Huel, um, I know, know Huel changes their formula. Right, in order so to they match slightly, it. slightly changed in the U.S. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They up yeah. their vitamin A to right, meet the to, requirements to hit the requirements. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, so on the U.S. companies, the same thing we've talked about the European companies. Toilet meets the requirements. Super Body Fuel, another old school uh, company from the U.S., they meet the requirements. And um, yeah, there's there's multiple companies as well that they go into the U.S. So you have good products both across both you know across the pond, both in Europe and uh, in the U.S. that are dedicated now to you know revolutionize food in certain aspects to give you to as you were speaking to give you a more convenient. Uh, and sometimes even healthier alternative to what we have, what you have. You were talking yeah. about the sandwiches, and in the UK, the sandwiches, you know, two slices of bread, maybe some chicken or ham or a vegan every day, version. same and thing every day. Cheap. That's what I had, yeah. Yeah, and then it's chips and soda. Yeah. So you know, you were gonna tell me how good chips and soda are every day. So yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. Um, and that's and it's interesting thing. So we we talked a bit about the diet, the diet, you know, the sort of nutritionist and the scientists and the science behind it, and um, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, people sometimes get the wrong impression, I think, and I see it in comments, people who haven't, you know, who just, you know, haven't tested it or tried it or even looked into it. And then they'll say, you know, who the hell eats this artificial rubbish, you know, <laughs> who eats this? And I get comments like that now and then and you think, you you know, mm-hmm. you've not, you've not really listened to anything I've said because, you know, the question is, is it real food? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and the answer is simply yes. <laughs> yeah, it is, and and that's and, sure and a, lo- a lot of the a lot of the major brands really you know focus on it all being sourced from natural ingredients. You you know your yep. protein is coming from you know pea pea and hemp protein or something like that. It's derived from that. It the oat you know um, you're getting your fiber from oats. Uh, yeah. and, and, and stuff like that, you know, the sunflower only thing, oil, for yeah, your sunflower oil, oil exactly, your your well. and, and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. um, so, um, you know, that's, the, that's the irony and this, and as you say, you touched on it, he'll describe it as complete food. Um, exactly, yeah. and it, and, you know, it, and, and that's why it makes the meal replacement idea a bit dated because you're not replacing your meal. You're, you're having it's, a meal. And <laughs> that, that's, that's actually that's, a great point. And that's, that's all, you know, point. you know, I'm, I'm having uh, stuff that's derived from, you know, naturally sourced oats, as I say, fibers, protein from the pea protein and hemp and mm-hmm. seed and sunflower seeds and sunflower oil and, you know, canola oil and it's different sort of oils that different people use and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. yeah. uh, it is, it is food, uh, but you might drink it, but equally soup is a liquid food, soup, yeah. you know, yes. full of nutrients. You know, they also say, oh, I have some yeah. chicken soup. You know, it's People full of healthy People smoothies all the time as well that. as they it's, were, you know. Exactly. I mean, I guess like one of the most ironic questions, you know, is, is, uh, is it healthy? Is that yeah. good for you? Yeah. You know, and uh, <laughs> the irony, I say irony, because it's that, you know, these brands are scrutinized even more than normal yeah, food is. Yeah, yeah. Because the people who are consuming these products, are, are at least the early adopters, are very, very, very critical. If yeah. they see one ingredient, one ingredient out of the oh, all the yeah. ingredient list, that's, 
it's something that they don't like or it's not their preference yeah it might not even be bad uh, yeah. like maltodextrin maltodextrin yeah. is not bad for yeah. you it's yeah. a yeah. carbohydrate but it has it's a bad rap all across food yes yeah, it has, it has a bad very rap. bad and I, I always question i questioned it and then i sort of researched a bit more and um you know i say to people people go oh it's got too much oh it's got sucralose in it or it's got uh, you know this has got maltodextrin in it or whatever that and and these some mm -hmm. some sort of bad bad vibes around those kind of terms mm -hmm. and they say oh it can't be healthy so it's just like you so you're saying like one tiny thing that you're not sure about therefore discredits the whole the rest yeah, of the product right. and yet so i say to people it's relative the question is not mm -hmm. if it's is it the most healthiest thing in the world maybe not. no one's claiming <laughs> that right but is it yeah. healthier than as i said a sandwich a bag of crisps and and a bottle of soda probably or it, it or you is. take away or, that you're your taking pizza, your exactly or a yep. kebab. yes it is significantly healthier so if you're having it every day and replacing yep. that sandwich or that mcdonald's mm -hmm. or whatever it is or you then, the meal then, you eat in your 7-eleven or whatever yeah, exactly yes. then yes it is much mm -hmm. healthier so uh, that's you know when i do my reviews that's what that's what i'm comparing it is like is it healthier than what you would normally have if you prepare exactly. yourself a beautiful dish of salad and avocado mm -hmm. and uh, you know and you, and all this kind of stuff well good luck to you keep doing it you know but not everybody has that time uh or or luxury to be able to do that and this or these, the will yeah or the will yeah and these products kind of provide that kind of a way of making sure that you're living a slightly more healthy lifestyle than perhaps you're already um uh for sure living. and and the uh, one thing to consider in here is that you know there's products and products there's products that maybe in the nutrition spectrum will be a little bit lower mm. and there's products that maybe in the nutrition spectrum yeah they'll be a little bit higher like there's products that oh i want things from real food well there there are products like bertrand which is a organic uh yeah, manufacturer from Germany, that every nutrient, including vitamins and minerals, which are usually added from a synthetic mix, uh, are from food. Like they use berries, spinach, and yeah. other like other vegetables and fruits and plants in order to provide you with all the vitamins and minerals. So when you read, uh, when you read their ingredient list, you will recognize every single ingredient in there. Yeah. There's nothing, you know, there's yeah, nothing. It is. There's it's nothing. All, yeah. And it's, I don't know if you tried to, so I tried eight, three, six, five, which I think was from Denmark. No, I have not yet. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's made by a former chef of, Ooh. um, a really fat, I forget his name now, but it's a really famous, uh, Danish restaurant, you know, it's Michelin star. Like it's got several Ooh, okay. Michelin stars and he was one, mm -hmm. he's not the chef of it. You know, they used to eat, I think they used to prepare the food with, with wildflowers and present it like that. It's really famous. Oh, okay. It's like sort of the, the chefs, chefs from around the world used to go there. It was mm -hmm. that kind of that, um, I forget the name of the restaurant. Anyway, the guy used to work in there and he prepares, um, you know, the, the shakes as it were, the powders and sources Ooh, okay. all the ingredients. Wow. And, and, and their whole, as you say, the whole raison d'etre mm -hmm. is it's all natural you know, all the vitamins, all the micronutrients, everything is sourced from natural uh, nice. sources. Wow. Yeah, that sounds very interesting. The, the other thing I was consider... yeah. oh, go on. No, I was gonna say you need to consider that this brands like big part of their focus is to source the ingredients from quality quality places. Like, like a lot of the European brands will only source from Europe. A lot of the French yeah. brands will only source from France because you know they want to have give a french you know the french love their uh yeah uh, made in france label so you know yeah. in order to provide with that they will do that uh in the uk Huel, i know they, they try to use you know local products or whatever so you know in, in the nutrition part as well like if you get the last thing uh in the nutrition angle is that you know europe is implementing this uh a score called nutri score and it was invented by the french uh by the french health uh, government and it's a way to rank how nutrient rich uh food is so maybe a biscuit, it would be a C. It's, it ranks from A being the best to E being the worst. A biscuit could be C or D. Almost all the yeah. uh, meal replacements or complete food products that we're going to discuss are rank A. Yeah, I so, yeah. so I I saw that Nutri score recently. I tried mm -hmm. um, a Y food bar. Yes, it could be Y food. Which, yes, which looks like a it looks like a candy bar, like a chocolate bar. Yeah, you very buy. Sweet. Like, uh, yeah. 
but it had an a, a new it had this nutri score thing on it which i'd not really noticed before well, so uh, and i got like one it, of the wafers here you could, uh, yeah that? and i had it had an a on it yeah but i was surprised yeah. that this bar thing had an a on it because it it it's like a like it's like a candy bar you get down the the the, the you know sweet and the texture whatever. and the flavor yes yeah that with sort of chocolate coating and then some crumbling yeah. and a biscuit thing and it was like perfect for a so it's not you know it was meant to be a it's a snack a, a sort of a, a snack, you know, yeah. yeah snack but yeah it had that nutri score a on it and i had to sort of look it up and i thought wow you know it's it's scoring a on it so yeah the other thing I always uh, that we sometimes get is people go, I always, I used to get, you know, when I drank it in the office or made it up in the office, because there's always different ways, you know, do I take the powder into work, make it up at work yeah. at lunchtime and then give, give Which it a shake. Which you can create a mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also, but, but also then you get people going, oh, what's that? Is that, yeah, is that a protein true. shake? Are you mm -hmm. build, are you bodybuilding? Like, uh, I don't think so. You know, <laughs> is it is it a whey shake? You know, like could people sort of see you drinking it and they automatically think, oh, you are you some, you know, health nut? I guess I suppose suppose we are sort of, but you know, bit, but yeah. you on some sort of you know fitness thing or some weight training because it, it's because you the, the only program. other yeah the other similar products you see are these big tubs of whey protein that you get in the natural food store or whatever like that um and mm -hmm. i think sometimes people muddle muddle them up with with those and those have been around for much longer for than ages. these sort of complete yeah. nutrition products and it's interesting to see some of those companies now moving so you know companies like huel and mana and jimmy joy they started from scratch as a complete nutrition product yes. company uh, and obviously, as we said, you know, it's a growing market. It has been for the last five years. So obviously people, you know, from an entrepreneurial point of view, people have been setting up these companies. But it's interesting how I've noticed now some of these traditional sort of, you know, weight, weight lifters, um, you know, powders and the whey proteins and the protein powders and companies that make those supplements for weight lifters and fitness are moving now, start doing their own uh, complete nutritional products. Uh, protein um, three six five or is is one that I tried recently. No, yeah, it's uh, the protein works. So protein works. In, in the, it, yeah, yeah. In the UK, there are two big companies for protein, but there's three. There's bulk. Uh, there's my protein, which yeah. also sells in the US, and uh, you, and then you have the protein works. And uh, my protein used to have one for a very long time, but I never really take care uh, took care of that bit. And the protein works uh, created uh, complete 360, and it's actually one yeah. of my favorite yeah. replacements. And I, I know we'll we'll talk about it like further down the line. But I think it's one of their more successful products because you know it's I always see it on the website yeah. whenever I visit the website, it's always there featured, and they're doing very well with it. They, and, they do so yeah. many products. They uh, do so you know, many. For, the, for the whole, you know, for the whole, like, you know, bodybuilding and all that kind of stuff like that. And then, Pro yeah. And whey then, protein, yeah, vegan protein, yeah. soy protein isolates. Uh, they sent me some protein spread just the other day. Uh, yeah. Some bit multivitamin gummies, you know, <laughs> everything yeah. you can imagine wow. about nutrition. You'll yeah. probably find in one of these. So, you yeah. know, if you're USN or, you know, in the, in the States, you have like the naked nutrition. And it's, you know, it's a, yeah, it's a protein, a standard protein brand that they're now nutritional. Brand. They're just expanding into the, the you know, it's because they, they see that there's, you know, you just, you know, my YouTube. And my protein has released a new one now. I'll uh, have that. You know, my protein is just releasing a new, they're rebranding their old, you know, complete food uh, offering. And now they're, I think it's called Binu, B-E-N-U. Um, oh. Yeah. So, you know, there's definitely a market that these brands yeah. are seeing. Yeah. It's profitable, so and and probably a lot of them are mate are manufacturing or the factories where they're manufacturing and milling. I guess milling the powder and stuff for mm -hmm. some of these up for these, you know, for the complete nutrition product companies. Mm -hmm. They, you know, if they they're also doing the stuff for these sort of whey and protein shake companies, so it makes sense. They might as well actually will move into that market as well. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what what have you? Let's let's go now. Move on to what we've been sort of. Uh, testing recently what have you been testing or reviewed uh lately i mean uh it's it's been uh, uh during the summer everything was a bit quiet but lately it's been uh, it's been crazy i was uh i was lucky enough to visit the manufacturing and the uh the office of satura office this satura is in austria mana yeah. is in prague for those who don't know there are two companies satura sells in the in europe and the uk whereas mana sells in europe uk and 
the US. Uh, so, you know, I, I was I was able to try some of their products. Uh, uh, I uh, They have the RTDs ready to drinks. Satsuru has a soy base ready to drink in multiple flavors. They're a bit thin uh, and a bit weak for my liking. Uh, I think uh, the original, original is pretty good and similar to Soylent for, for Origin for those yeah. who tried. Uh, but, you know, they have different flavors. They have Origin, Berry, Chocolate, Vanilla, and uh, they might be coming up with more soon. So, And they also have a bar now, which is, I really, really enjoyed it. Bars are great if you're traveling, by the way. Yeah, if anyone's yeah. traveling, taking the plane, bars have saved me, saved me yeah, multiple, same multiple times. Yeah. So I really enjoyed their bar. They have a chocolate brownie bar which was bit, it was very chewy yeah uh, the bars are they tricky because like, they're because they're, cause they're yes. usually quite you know like to get a whole meal uh mm. they're usually quite dense uh yes, i know like huel the huel bar there there's more there is more th that's more of a snack bar in terms of the calories yeah. which means it's slightly mm. smaller but like i i've tried the vast selection of bars that uh jimmy joy do the plenty bar very good uh loads of fantastic it. flavors but yeah. they are quite they have to be quite dense uh yes. just because in order to pack all the stuff um the stuff in so i always say to people if you're gonna have those bars which are actual you know 400 calories or whatever it is yes. uh, type bars <laughs> have it with a cup of tea or a coffee or something because it can they can be quite dry <laughs> yeah you do I mean, we'll go over at some point, but the bars are some of the most challenging uh, products to make. Powders are much easier to yeah. make. Ready to drinks are also easier. To, the, the cost to produce is higher, but they're easier to make. But bars, as you say, you need to condense everything into a format and then it needs to stick together. With a yeah. powder, the water does that, you know? Whereas with the in the solid form, it's much harder to keep the fats together, the vitamin and minerals together. So, you know, you get this weird texture sometimes, maybe you I'm probably you notice in some of them. Uh, so a lot of them, they've gone to the snack bar territory where yeah. you're still nutritionally complete, but they will instead of giving you the 200, the 400 calories, they will give you only like around 200 calories nowadays. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, which is like, so with the Y food bar, I recently tried, it's perfect sometimes for, a, for an mm -hmm. afternoon snack. I make I like to have a coffee at three. You know, in the yes. afternoon, I make myself a mm -hmm. you know coffee, and then I'll grab a snack. And I know that's right. Okay, that's an extra two hundred you know calories still supplying within that two and the mo you know the most efficient delivery of all the vitamins, macro you know macro and micronutrients mm -hmm. that I need within those two hundred calories. And yet, it's also a sweet, tasty snack. It doesn't. It doesn't it's quite actually, filling, actually. Yeah, yeah, and 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 so. Um, you know, it's it sort of I find them really useful in, in that way. And sometimes, you know, in the morning I can grab and go in the car and my daughter's forgot to have breakfast. I'll just say, have that. I'll give her a coffee in the morning yeah, yeah. and she's got it. Um, you know, she's not six. Uh, she, yeah, she's 17. So I'll say, look, here's a coffee, here's a bar <laughs> and she'll and I'll take her to school. And I know that she, at least she's getting, you know, she's missed breakfast. Or at least she's getting some food into her and, you know, um, and getting, the right nutrients and stuff at the, at the same time. So, um, yeah, the thing about yeah, manner so though, it's interesting. You touched on, on, on the, on the manner. I think, and I'm just looking at the wiki, the wiki page of the Soylent and it's got like a metal scoop and then the white yes. packaging it's somewhere and, under. Yes. Yeah. And the manner and the manner looks very similar to that. And it's interesting because, um, I, I, I think Huel never really claimed to be, you know, something producing a product that you could, and although people do, that you could Live just off. replace all your meals with. Yes. I don't think he'll make a point. I think sometimes on the website that it, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's not something that you necessarily replace mm -hmm. everything with and you live off it like some sort of astronaut. Um, yeah. uh, and I think the idea is that you have it as a, either as a sort of a breakfast meal or a lunch meal, and then, you know, do what you want to do in the evening, go and have a nice meal or whatever, eat a meal. And that's very much the way I think they pitch it. Whereas I find with Manor, I, and the fact that also uh, Manor, I think, approach it like like you are an astronaut in a way. <laughs> and that you could, I think it's, yeah. yeah, you could effectively live off Manor. It'd, it'd be a bit boring. Um, yeah, because yeah, food, you know, music, me. music be the food of love. You know, food <laughs> is, is part is more than just 
you know, Spotify. we're talking very, yeah, we're talking about it in a very kind of clinical way, but but there's more to food than just fueling the body, and and it's it would be quite aspect boring. Of it, of course, yeah. But but the science that goes into the manner and the way mm-hmm. that you know each meal is 400 calories, each pack has about five meals in it, so each pack is a day's worth, worth yeah. of complete nutrition. So it you know come the apocalypse you know uh, i've got loads of it here come the apocalypse i'm sorted uh you know i can yeah, live off I mean, that, it's looking like uh, in britain it's going to happen any yeah, soon. exactly yeah <laughs> so um um but yeah, it's just interesting the slight differences between uh Huel's approach mm-hmm. and manner and i think manner much much more closely aligned with the soylent approach which was yeah. meant to be you know this you you know if we were on mars You'd never have to, you know, you don't have to harvest your own potatoes like that in the <laughs> film The Marsh and whatever, you know. I you mean, could just live off fuel or whatever. I mean, the manner. I think we skipped over it a little bit, maybe. The, I mean, maybe we should come back to the point that you were making. Uh, like uh, maybe some people think, oh, is this all, is this all you eat? You know, what are mm. social aspects? What if you're going to have a meal yeah. socially or, you know, and, you know, the answer to that, I mean, for me, obviously, is, you know, no, I have this meal for my own. And I still enjoy, or maybe because I have these meals in my own, I enjoy the meals socially and I enjoy yeah. the meals with my family or my dinner even more. Uh, in my case, uh, I tend to really, really enjoy a meal replacement in the morning because yeah. for me, I like to go to the gym. I like to be sporty. And, you know, I like to have a certain amount of protein in my um, in my meals. And, you know, if I were to prepare my breakfast, I usually used to have two toasts and then Oh, what well, I'm gonna have for a protein. So either I had a protein shake or I yeah. cook an omelette or some sort of, you know, or some tuna or some ham or, you know, or I cook, a, some people even cook a beef steak in the morning. And I, I don't wanna do wow. that. It just, yeah, 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 yeah. it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's yeah. With me, yeah. So instead, yeah, I have my morning coffee and then I have a shake and I it hydrates me in the morning, which obviously I drink a lot of water in the morning. Uh, everyone should, by the way. And um, yeah, at the same time, it, it ensures me that I have, you know, the, the the protein that I want, the nutrients that I want, and I kickstart the day. It doesn't make me feel sluggish. Uh, it makes me feel energized. And I kickstart the day. I don't have to worry. If I'm in a rush, I can do it in front of the computer. Otherwise, you know, I have yeah. the meal, I walk around, and then I can start working uh, during lunchtime as well. Like if I'm very, you know, if I have a lot of work, I'll have a meal replacement again. That helps me because that I don't have that. If I eat food, I feel I, I spend two hours, what, yeah. like half an hour cooking, half an hour eating, and then I'll feel sluggish. I'll lie down in the sofa or I'll relax for a little bit. And then, you know, I'll, st- I'll, th- I'll start two hours later and I'll feel really tired. So, you know, but then I really enjoy my dinners. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... I've- yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I tend to I'm very sort of similar. I I tend not to have it for breakfast. Sometimes I do, but mm-hmm. I'll tend to have uh, just peanut butter on toast. You know, there because you. I'm getting the protein from the peanut butter. It's 100 percent, pe- you know, from and peanuts and stuff. So uh, mm-hmm. I'll you know I'd probably exercise every other day. So I'll I'll do some exercise in the morning, and then I'll make myself uh, you know a latte and have peanut butter on toast, and then. Nice. At every lunchtime, I'll have some form of, you know, meal replacement product, usually a shake, um, mm-hmm. yeah. put it in the old Nutribullet, give it a whiz up and and then carry on working or doing what I'm doing and, and, and chilling. And then, as you say, in the evening meal, I, I, I kind of want something hot. Uh, yeah, and until recently, until recently, there wasn't much choice in the terms of meal in, in the complete nutritional product range so you know sometimes it would just be an omelette and and toast or something like that or, an, or a, a toasty mm-hmm. sandwich of some sort or, or you know or even a bought you know product uh, the thing called um bowls the like bol which is just uh it's oh, like yes, a, he- yes. a healthy stuff put it in the microwave and stuff like that and it's so, so I something think it's like that in the uk yeah and then in and then when the kids are here then i'll i'll you know i'll do them a a, a katsu curry or something like that and we'll have that together nice. or something like that and and last night i was out um in this in the city and i went to a, a nice tapas bar 
and oh, you know nice. indulged in a bit of beautiful you know spanish tapas it was lovely uh so yeah it's it's not about as you say it's not although people do and you'll see on youtube i yeah, lived off fuel yeah. for 30 days and it's like mm -hmm. yeah it's it, like as i said life would be pretty boring if you just had had it all the time but that being said if you can just replace one meal with this you just know at least at least one meal a day is yeah. is doing the right thing for you you know uh, it's also like i i i feel disingenuous for people to believe that every meal that they eat it's important or consequential or in terms of that you know they enjoy every single meal yeah. they have every single day you know yeah. like i have tons of friends who you know they've eventually gone to meal replacements at least not every day like that's the thing you can yeah. be flexible you know they're there you and they last for like six to 12 months in the shelves so especially the powder form so you can have them one day maybe not have them for two three days and have them again like you don't need to have them mm. every day nor for every meal you know it's flexible you choose but you know a lot of my friends have found out that eventually you know yeah well i don't want the same toast uh, as i usually have or yeah. I don't fancy having lunch today. I just, you know, I just need, I just need the energy. I'm just hungry. You know, yeah. sometimes those meals are not that important. And instead you'd rather have the nutrition. And we're speaking as, you know, these meal replacements are, oh, like, you know, oh, this is the worst alternative order. No, they taste pretty good. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. a lot well, of their the thing is it's the development it's from them. Because initially, you know, a lot of people, I think had initial problems with, with Soylent, the taste of Soylent. And, you know, Huel was all right. The first oh, one, yes. uh, it, it, it was okay, but it's a bit gloopy and oaty and a bit vanilla -y and, and stuff like that. And then they went to um, their version two, which I hated. It was too, <laughs> too much of a sweetener taste. And I've always had an issue with, with the Huel there until they did their the Huel Black Edition oh, with okay. its extra protein, which I quite liked and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then I discovered other products. And and I've started liking, you know, those. And then you've got products like Jimmy Joy, who now what do about ten Fantastic. different flavors. Yeah, yeah. Uh really and 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 I've reviewed them and they, they all have a similar base taste, but with yes. this hint yes. of alternative flavor. And they do like yes. a, they do a chai tea latte flavor, they Ooh, do nice. mango, they do the passion fruit flavor, just lots of really interesting uh, uh flavors. And then you have the stuff like Y food, who I've been uh, talking of stuff we've been looking at, I was looking at the white yes, food. Uh, vegan. I have some here I was showing earlier. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. The powders, so I've the powders, been trying yeah. the ready to drink white food oh. vegan range. Okay. Um, so I uh, now, and I always recommend, often I recommend to people, despite you know, my go to is Huel or whatever, is start with white food. One, because oh, they yes. were one of the first people to do a taster pack. Mm -hmm. you know the thing is some of these yep. some of these meal replacement products are expensive because you have to order a lot in one go Feels notoriously bad with that yeah and years, so you they, go like they've, what, improved, six... they've improved but yes. yeah yeah they do a taster pack now but like it was like 60 quid and then what happens if you take it and it's like oh it's horrible like, i get people comments on my youtube and they go <laughs> i hate it and i have to throw it all away and it's like well i can't you know we're... taste is subjective we have to be honest you know uh there there are huel products and their hot and savory range, which I sort of mentioned mm -hmm. that now things have developed where you can have a hot meal and it and it's a nutrition, you know, complete nutrition product that you'll do. They do these hot and savory ranges. And that's so sometimes I have those as my evening meal as well now um, because they're hot and tasty. That's what they say they do. Um, but, yeah, you yeah. get people like, oh, I, I bought that off your recommendation. I hated it. And it's like, well, what I like. You know, it's subjective, so it's it's hard for me to, you know, you have to sort of, you, you can't be general with every, you know, no, no, everybody's going to taste things in this, exactly the same the same way, um, as well. But yeah, so I tried the Y food. Um, I always recommend Y food because oh, I think they're I, really I, tasty. I'll agree with you. I'll yeah. agree with you there. I it's, say Y food is is the product that I feel the most confident recommending and yeah. being feeling safe about you liking the yeah, product yeah i'm not going to tell you it's the best product but no. i'm going to tell you if you tried it there's a high likelihood that you'll like it or I, you like it a lot yeah taste wise i think it's it's uh, it's the it's probably one of the best tastes also powder on the rtd yeah but they but in terms of nutrients and, and and other and again we're judging it on that sort of spectrum they're all within the same ballpark but i would kind of slightly lean to some some others and right now my go-to is um mana 
Uh, I just, oh, yeah, for some yeah. reason, I just love the manor, uh, 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 you know, um, origin, origin flavor. You know, the, it's yes, just the hint yes. of vanilla. Uh, and in a way, Very I shouldn't good. like it because I've had so much Jimmy <laughs> Joy and stuff and all their like mm -hmm. beautiful chai latte and pistachio and all that kind of stuff. But somehow my favorite is the most bland, but with this hint of vanilla of all the, yeah. of all the meal replacement yeah. products, but the Y food. Yeah. So Y food drinks are very easy as well. You don't even have to think about it. They're ready to drink. You just grab them out of the fridge. We don't have to keep them in the fridge, but they're just nice if they're chilled and mm. uh, they're tasty. And um, now they're the different with their drink, the Y food, standard drink their classic drink is mm -hmm. um it's uh, has a it's a, has a milk base yes the so, original one is milk -based. yeah yes. yeah so they also have the vegan version which is not milk based for obvious reason because mm -hmm. it's vegan and so i think it's effectively a soy milk its main ingredient is water yes. and soy so i'm soy, assuming soy that and is, yeah yeah it's a soy milk type thing so i've been i've been testing that and it's very um it's still very, very tasty, but it's a very different experience uh, to their the Y food ready to drink classic, uh, yes. which which benefits from the fat for me anyway that it that it has yes, this sort of milk base uh, because certain ready to drink sort of work like as, as a sort of a milky drink, um, mm -hmm. but if you if you are a vegan and you don't have milk. Mm -hmm then you probably have soy milk or, or oat milk or, or stuff like that. So actually, um, you the texture of the Y food mm -hmm. vegan range would be something you're familiar with because, because soy milk has a very different, it, it feels a bit sort of thinner than, watery, than, yes, than milk is. in watery. And that's the overall, it's still very tasty, but you know, I, yes. I'm not a vegan and therefore I quite like the milk the milk Sorry. kind of side of the classic but yeah so i tried the y food uh vegan range of the ready to drink so they don't do as many flavors as their the classic range um no. uh but uh, i i i do recommend it especially from a, a vegan point of view and if you want to try um the products uh before and also the thing with powders uh talking of like trying it the first time mm -hmm. um they don't always shake that well if you're using a, a a shaker and so i i always know i review them i always use my nutribullet i mean yes. it work usually it works with powders this is across the board they usually shake enough but i really mm. want to get i really want to maximize the mix as it were so i i do it in a nutribullet to whiz it up really you know, get mm. as close as i can to like a ready to drink you don't because the ready to drink formula is slightly different across these things in order so that yes, they yes. feel more more sort of um mm -hmm. liquefied as it were um but yeah so um so what yeah the why food vegan ready to drink uh if you are a vegan I as i say i think you will not be disappointed i think if you're used to the classic mm -hmm. why food ready to drink do, you, you probably you might, you might like be a bit dis yeah you might be a little disappointed I only and that's only because the why food trick is really good and their that's lassies fantastic. oh Oh, <laughs> I had so yes. they do a lemon cheese. So the first lassi I tried, so they do a lassi which has a bit more milk in it to to give that kind of yogurt. It's a thicker uh, texture as well. Yeah, it's yeah. More like so, is, or... yeah so to give it a a yogurt, a slight more yogurt te texture, like a lassi mm -hmm. is like a in a drinkable yogurt, I guess. What is a, is mm -hmm. a lassi? Um, and they did the. I think it was the. The strawberry and then the mango lassi. The lassi. mango lassi was the first one because I, they released it last year. Yeah, and it that blew my mind, like it was. Wow. That one is, I think, all my yeah. all-time favorite yeah. drink is the mango lassi from White Food, yeah. which you and, can actually buy now. Yeah, and then and they did then then they so they do limited editions. And they did the lemon cheesecake one, which Sounds my son good. tried it and he went, "Wow, that's, <laughs> that's sweet." And, and it is, <laughs> it is like, it's like liquefied lemon cheesecake. It, it is like, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> you get like, wow. Uh, but mm. it doesn't have a, a sort of a sickly aftertaste, but it is very okay. sweet. And it almost okay. feels, how can this, this has still mm. got all the same micro macronutrients and vitamins yeah, and yeah, everything, so but still in your head, there's a disconnect <laughs> between your what you're what you're seeing you know what your brain mm. is seeing and what you're reading mm. you got or tasting you taste it and you're going wow this is so sweet and nice it's like it feels yeah. like an indulgence and stuff like that so uh yeah so i've i've been trying um as i say the the y food um 
vegan ready to drink and uh, as i mentioned earlier i also they sent me a box of um I'm trying to think what flavor it is now salted, but salted salted caramel and chocolate yes that's it the caramel and chocolate one and it, and that is just like we have a, a bar in the uk i think called lion bar or something which is a candy bar it's like yes. that like it's not like the other bars i've tried which is we talked about being very condensed mm -hmm. uh, with a bit of choco flavor this feels like it's got like a chocolate covering and like and a, then it has a caramel base, layer a caramel and then layer white. just like a twix or something and the rice puffs uh, they have, they have um, like rice puffs isn't it um, rice puffs it's, or... it's got some it's got some uh I don't think it's got the rice. Yeah, it's got some sort of bits like that in in it. Like, but it's like I say, mm -hmm. like a Twix bar in in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that's that's the sort of texture when you when you bite into it, and yet mm -hmm. it's it's packed full of all these nutrients, and so it it feels an indulgence sometimes, but it's a nice little mm -hmm. indulgence to have. So those are the two two things I've been um, I've, I've been sort of testing over the last week, and I'll be doing. Um, I've tasted them all. I've just got to do the finished videos and they'll be uploading onto on the YouTube I'll, channel. Um, I'll check shortly. them out for sure. I'll yeah, check yeah. Them out for sure. I also uh, uh, had the, sorry, I was just saying, I was, obviously, for those I haven't seen, you should check it out. Recent, the more recent one as well is, was the Mana Burger, um, okay. which is, is on, which I've tested as well. And, you know, that's talking about really, we, we touched on it, how things have diversified from just powder. Mm -hmm. And water. I think before you go into the Mana yeah. Burger, which I think we'll touch because I also had the chance to try while I was in Prague uh, in the factory, I was going to say, I think you're touching a very good point on a lot of people, and you will see this in Reddit come up, but, uh, how can I make the powder to taste the same as the RTD? Yeah. You know, a lot of people seem to have this question, you know, I tried the RTD, it was really smooth, I really liked it, but the powder is cheaper, the powders are always cheaper than the ready to drinks. <clears throat> And the powder is cheaper. I bought the powder, and it's not the same. It doesn't same that it doesn't taste the same. It happens with Soylent a lot. In Reddit, you'll see a lot bit of, yeah. about this with Soylent. It happens with Huel. It happens with every single brand. Uh, you know, how can I make it taste the same? Well, the short answer is that you can't because yeah. they simply don't have the. They're not one to one the same. They're not one to one the same in ingredients, and the process of making is different. When you think about where where the RTDs are made, these ready-to-drink products are made in huge factories where they have uh, special machines to mix all the ingredients yeah. together. And to they might have them mixed. really finely, I imagine, yeah. Yes, uh, it mill it really finely. And they might have it mixed, like they mix them at like 200 uh, degrees or 120 degrees. Like they mix them at certain temperatures. And I went, when I went to Mana, they told me, you know, this this goes to this company, it's milled there, maybe it's like a few hours on the mixing processor, and then, you know, they are in 120 degrees, or I can't remember the exact number, but, you know, we cannot try them like three day, for three days, they sit, for three to six days, I can't remember, they sit there, and you cannot drink them, because they're too hot, and they have a burn aftertaste, whereas, you know, that burn aftertaste of being really hot, it goes, yeah. it fades away, so, you know. Anyways, right. the RTDs for any beginner, the ready to drink, even though they're more expensive, they're usually the easier to like. They're yeah. much more smooth. You won't have find any graininess or anything like that. And the flavors that you will find, they are going to be more aligned to with what you're used to with the protein shakes that you might find in Sainsbury's or your 7-Eleven yeah. or your Costco. You know, the texture and the flavor are much more like that. Whereas the powders can be, in the case of Huel, more OT, uh, yeah. more uh, earthy. A uh, mix of like different flavors. Uh, they can There's have like a strong, or... that strong OT with with the when you make the shakes that there is mm -hmm. always that kind of slight OT uh, sort of uh, taste to it in the background of, of most of mm -hmm. most of these drinks because that's where they they sort yes. of you know get yeah it's their, one of the main ingredients in yeah. most. Uh, Interesting. Uh, those we're talking about so talking about the difference between the ready to drinks as well. I noticed. So the other thing I forgot, completely forgot I've been testing this week are the new. Huel ready to drink flavors. Oh, so they've introduced my hands. Uh, yeah, and wow, they've got that. But the, the, on paper, they sound amazing. So you've got s cinnamon swirl, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. imagine you Crazy. get you're buying a cinnamon pastry mm -hmm. from Starbucks <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, it's that mm -hmm. that taste. There's coffee caramel, mm -hmm. there's strawberries and cream. Yeah, so they do a strawberries and cream in the in the. Huel Black. Black Edition, yeah. So there's a strawberry and cream version. 
<laughs> and uh, let me just. And salted caramel. caramel. I was just looking at my shelf there. there. Yeah, so it's actually iced iced coffee caramel and then and then mm -hmm. salted caramel. Wow. Uh, so originally they just did sort of your vanilla, your choco and your berry one and maybe a banana one, I think. Um, oh, yeah, the banana was the, last, the latest addition. Yeah, yeah. So they've added these uh, new uh, flavors. And I was looking at the ingredients uh, and comparing it and one of the main ingredients which is not so much in the in the powders to the same degree was was maltodextrin which we touched on before yes. and uh, so i was looking into maltodextrin a bit and one of the things that maltodextrin helps with and that's why you see it in a lot you see it in lots of products food products is it actually mm -hmm. helps mix things it's a carrier yeah so uh, I think not only, I mean, it, it's, it's its own sort of carbohydrate, I think, as I understand it, sort of to a certain yeah, it's degree. Yeah, a carbohydrate, yes. And um, it has quite, it's interesting because it has a high glycemic index. And yet, mm -hmm. um, the overall glycemic index of the ready-to-drinks aren't, aren't that that high, but it's a bit odd because it's... It's, it's, it's very it's low. I think it's around it. yeah. 27. Yeah. Which is and, in a scale um, of 1 to 100, really low. Yeah. So I think they're using it mostly... For the texture, this is what maltodextrin is used uh, for in in a lot of a lot of foods. Uh, some healthy, some mm -hmm. less healthy, but it's for the to help with the binding and the texture, uh, mm -hmm. and also for if you're into fitness, it it also helps with that initial energy burst as well. If you yeah. you know, so a lot of um, energy drinks have elements of maltodextrin in for that very yeah, reason. So you get a spike of energy uh, at the mm -hmm. beginning. So um, yeah, it was just interesting that that was one of the differences. And I put it down is exactly, I was thinking, I think, I'm not an expert, but I think one of the mm -hmm. reasons they use it in the ready to drinks is to help with that mixing process. So that it's much, it, it, as say, it feels much more kind of drinkable as it were and, and, and in a liquid it's, form. Uh... It's 100% the case. Uh, even in the powders, you'll find some powders, the original soil mm. uh, had maltodextrin. And one of the comments of the original powder is that it was very thin compared to others, compared to Hue, which was much rather, rather, uh, rather um, you know, Hue had a lot of fiber as well. And you could notice the fiber in the drink where soil was a lot more smoother. Mana has maltodextrin. It's a lot smoother to drink, like the powder has maltodextrin. It's a lot smoother. So maltodextrin mixes very well. It's very water soluble. It's a carrier. It's used to carry fats and vitamins and minerals, like right. in very small amounts. It's yeah. like insignificant amounts, but you know, as you say, it's a carrier. And as you say, it's a it's a complex carbohydrate, which means it's usually complex carbohydrates are you know glucose, lactose, or sugars tied together with each other. And um, excuse me, maltodextrin is a complex carbohydrate in terms of that it has many uh, many many simple carbohydrates att attached together. But unlike most complex carbohydrates, which, you know, the process of breaking down, like you might need chopping those single carbohydrates, usually takes long. That's why the GI will be low in many products with complex carbohydrates. Uh, in maltodextrin, that chopping process happens very fast. It happens very fast, which means that your maltodextrin, when you digest maltodextrin, it goes rapidly into blood sugar. Right. And that causes for the GI to be high. You know, it has a high impact in your blood sugar. I think it's 85. How, how, what happens in the products like Huel is that this maltodextrin, it's not like you take water and put maltodextrin and drink it. You yeah. have maltodextrin, you have fats, you have right. protein, you have other ingredients together. So that, so so that, that brings the, the GI down. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's the GI to 27, which is really low, like a, in a scale to like, you know, Anything below forty is usually considered low. They and also, below thirty, very yeah. low. Okay, yeah. So they and they also it's it's tapioca, uh, tapioca, yeah, uh, mounted dextrin. So uh, it's suitable for uh, gluten. Yeah, so it's gluten free, gluten free as well. So they've they've really thought thought it through. So uh, another yeah, well, another yeah. use case for maltodextrin uh, against oats is the gluten free aspect of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the thing. So. Uh, the thing about so the Huel, and again, I've got a review a review coming up of that. But I posted a YouTube, I posted a YouTube short because Very I was fun. editing it, and I just kept saying 
Very nice. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> now, my review may not quite mm. come out how you think it does, Ooh. given given that little YouTube shorts, because okay. um, one thing, you know, spoiler alert, one thing um, I think if, if you're, if you're in the test lab of Puel mm -hmm. or wherever you are and you're testing them, like initially it's like, okay, I can, I can wow. see where you're like going. if you buy, if you have a cinnamon swirl, it's like, oh, wow. You get all the kind Amazing. of sugar sweet kind of oh mm -hmm. sensation. It's beautiful. You know, the, the salted caramel, it's like, Whoa, that's very sweet and beautiful and, and lovely. Now they use uh, steviol as their sweetener um, mm -hmm. and coconut sugar, so they never used to have because so they don't use sucralose in the two point oh. Yeah, yeah. So, so they use coconut mm -hmm. sugar and 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 sort of steviol, which is effectively stevia, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, stevia, yeah. And I used to have occasionally use stevia in my cups of tea years ago when I had you know, and I I hate it. I had to stop <laughs> having it because 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 it because of the aftertaste. It has a very distinctive. Uh, yes. It has a very distinct aftertaste. So, uh, my overall feeling with the Huel product uh, was that really nice when you first taste them, but it's mm -hmm. 500 mils of this yeah. sweetness, and so it's like in like in the same way you might you know have a slice of lemon cake or whatever, and you go oh, lemon cheese, and oh that's lovely, but but if you ate all of it, you'd be going. It's a bit, I, I've got so much sweetness in my mouth now. It's a bit yeah. too much. And, yeah. and what I found is that that, the, that, that sort of steviol uh, aftertaste, and I think that's what it is, mm -hmm. lingers for, yeah, for be, yeah. quite a while after I've finished mm -hmm. the product in the same way this it used is where to be when I used to put it into the, in, in, you know, when I put a, would put a little, you know, tab in my, uh, in my tea. Uh, yeah. And I'd get that uh, when I finished a cup of tea, I'd still have that sweet yeah, aftertaste. Same aftertaste. So, um, yeah, this so is where I we go full circle, Clive. This is where we go full circle, and this is why. And it's not only you. I've heard this from other people. You really like mana. It's because the mana origin, while it's planned, it's yeah. one day after the other, after yeah. the other, after the other. You never get bored because you don't yeah. have this strong stimulus that's like yeah. it's like punching yeah. you in the face. You know. Yeah. You're like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that strong stimulus because they do the these new flavors don't get me wrong they are lovely <laughs> some people will find them too sweet um yeah. and sometimes they are but sometimes you mm. want that like it's like a kick in the face sweetness you want that that kind of sweet kind of wow mm -hmm. but you know after that that sort of that novelty of that first wow wears taste wears off once you get down to the 450 millimeter mm -hmm. you know of of the drink so that's sort of my overall uh feeling i'd still use them i took them as i say i i was on a long car yeah. journey and i had the iced coffee caramel on the on the way back as i was driving and stuff like that just because i was hungry mm -hmm. and at the same time there's there's about about an espresso amount of caffeine in there as well uh so oh, kind of, it, it, it it served a purpose so i purposely grabbed mm -hmm. the the, the the ice so, the uh, caramel. Caramel. One, yeah. but yeah so so look out for those reviews but um yeah that's that's kind of what i've been um yeah i look uh, forward to hear uh, to listen to what you say because unlike the other product that we've talked about the mana rtd and the white foods i've tried both i think i fully agree with you in what you say the the original rtds if you like milk white food rtds are like milkshakes the coconut yeah, one is yeah. super really good yeah. the banana one new one is really good the chocolate one is really good it used to be thicker uh, it's a bit thinner now, yeah. in my opinion. Unfortunately, it used to be alpine chocolate, and now they alpine call it, chocolate. Yes, yeah, they call now it it's classic something. chocolate. Yeah. yeah, so really good. If you if you don't care about vegan or not vegan, go for the original line. Yeah, it's much better. They have a tar taster pack, as you say. They send me the taster pack. It's really nice experience. You'll enjoy most of them. Uh, the vegan one. Also, by the way, I think they are some of the cheapest as well in RTDs. The yeah. white food are some of the cheapest uh, in both Europe and the UK, actually. Uh, the vegan one is okay, but it's more similar to what other companies yeah. offer, like Saturo yeah. that we were talking about before, right. Mana. Uh, yeah. Whereas like the old, uh, and all coming back to this, the the ones that I particularly, and Jimmy Joy also offers uh, vegan. I mean, we'll talk about all of them at some point. Uh, coming back to Huel, uh, the 1.0, I remember uh, I met this this friend from my school. I hadn't met him in like eight years. And, you know, I was walking around. I met him and, oh, yeah, I just come from uh, 
I just come from, uh, you know, he was coming from back from Ukraine and he was in the airport. And I was like, I was like, and he said, oh, look, uh, and I picked up a Huel. Do you know about Huel? I was like, yeah, yeah, I know about Huel because obviously Huel now also they have, you know, their, uh, they have their uh, RTDs in the, uh, in the machines. In yeah, the, they, yeah, they have not they? Got, yeah, I just yeah, saw yeah. that. And throw, they, I saw a thing where, and I was telling my daughter because she saw them in the supermarket, and I went, yeah, no, mm -hmm. they've been in the supermarket for a while, but they've yeah. also got vending machines in some of the airports. Exactly. Crazy. So, you know, apparently he picked one of them, and he really didn't like it. And yeah. I was like, I'm not surprised. Huel's RTD is my least favorite yeah. of the RTDs in the market right now. I think, well, I, I highly recommend Huel products usually. Yeah. Uh, I think the RTD is just not up there. So I look forward to see what you think about the 2.0, yeah. because in my opinion, the 1.0, unless you have a strong dislike of soy, is not one that I would recommend. Yeah. Not not in Europe, I know in the US. I think in the US you have Owen, Soylent, Mana. Uh, in Europe you have White Food, Saturo, Plenty Shake, Feed. Uh, yeah, you have a lot of a lot of options before so this you, the new store. fuel ready to drink so their 2.0 version uh <laughs> so yeah but I, I i agree i i i kind of recommend fuel for for the ingredients uh, yes. uh but less so on the on the taste so i sort of balance those things off in mm -hmm. in my head when i when i when i have the fuel and i i, I, I mean agree. i even with the black edition which i is probably my favorite oh, yeah, the powders, of, yeah. of the fuel in terms of the powders um there are tastier v powders out there but i like mm -hmm. the contents of the of the fuel and it's all as we say it's all relative the you know equally the contents sure. and the taste it's all, all relative but yeah some people won't 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 like the fuel I, 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 and i get that but i always recommend it from a an ingredient point of view definitely mm -hmm. what what other things have you been um trying recently well, uh, I had the chance to try all white foods. Uh, I, the reviews are live. Uh, I renewed the, the reviews for the powder and the uh, RTD. Uh, so if anyone wants to check my opinion, just go to the website. And uh, I'll be reviewing a lot more products. But right now I'm reviewing this company, a small company called, actually it's small, it's not that small, it's called Supersonic. Ah, Supersonic. Okay. I've never heard from them before. No. So it's the first... The first time one of my readers pointed me out to them, I contacted them and asked them. They do plant-based products, uh, plant-based meal replacements with, uh, you know, us, anyone else, all the all the nutrients that you need. I think Nutri-Score A, all the standards. Uh, they where, have. Where uh, are they based? Sorry, they're in Poland. They're from Poland, actually. Poland, right. I think okay. they're the only uh, company that I know of from Poland, uh, and uh, they have one pound, like one version of the powder. Uh, all plant-based. I mean, uh, they have multiple flavors: uh, banana chocolate, uh, Belgian chocolate. One of the ones I'm trying: coconut, vanilla, and some others that you know. I only have two try that I'm trying. Uh, but you know, they're high in protein, high in fiber. They have a, a special focus on like omega threes. They even send me an they. And uh, besides the powder, they also do stuff like. Uh, Cow and cacao, and I got a coffee with Ashwanda, and they sent me some uh, coffee, nootrop yeah, right. like a ah. yeah, like coffee with nootropics, or yes. you know, like yes. stimulants. Coffee. I've had one with like a like a mushroom trop, uh, stuff in it in uh, as well yes. coffee, yeah, recently. So, so you know, they they, they besides the nutritional powder, they have other like uh, arrangement to improve performance. They have fish oil, like uh, capsules of I, actually I don't know whether. I, they're probably not fish oil, but they're omega three. Yeah. Omega three. Uh maybe from algae. I need to read. I need to look. I think it's probably from algae, so plant based. Yeah. Uh, omega three of high quality, because a lot of the issues with the omega three that comes from uh, canola and most of the sources yeah. is that it converts very poorly into the actual omega threes that are beneficial for you, EPA and DHA. So these ones have, you know, DHA and EPA. Uh so I've been trying this out basically. I only I have the powder in two flavors. And uh, I'll say um, the Belgian chocolate is better than the coconut one. The coconut one was uh, a slight disappointment. This is how spoiler, it, how well, spoiler coconut, alert. Yeah. How does, so have you tried the, the coconut, the Jimmy Joy coconut? No, not yet, unfortunately. Right. Not yet, okay. unfortunately. I just wondered how, that, how it compares with that. Um, yeah. From what I imagine, it's uh, this one. The problem with this one, I don't know what, what it causes, but it also has an aftertaste. Like some right. plant-based products have this... Uh, 
chemical aftertaste to it. Like a, yes. it's not sourness. It's a, a, a alkaline kind of like right. Yeah, flavor, sort of, like, it's like metallicy kind of taste. Yes. Or, yeah. Uh, I thought it comes from the soy. Uh, I think it, actually, you this know, does have soy. Yeah, so. it's interesting because I, I, I touched on Eat Three Six Five from Denmark, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, every ingredient is plant based. Oh, okay. Uh, in there, and actually, you know, that had a slight, although it was sort of t tasty, there was that mm -hmm. slight alkaline metallicy element to it. So I'm just wondering whether it's it's you know I usually thought it was from soy things. from what yeah. I've heard from some manufacturers, okay. but this one has no soy. This yeah. one is another one. Uh, is using pea, rice, pumping, pumpkin, and hemp to yeah. as a protein yeah. source. Hemp is getting very popular lately. Yeah, it is. So yeah. you know, it doesn't have uh, what I would expect to have, like you know, the the metallic aftertaste. So I don't know where it's coming. And the problem with the coconut one is that. It ha that metallic aftertaste is more pronounced because the coconut right. flavor is not as strong. Whereas in the Belgian chocolate, it's a darker. I know you've tried the amber light one, but you know it's a darker chocolate. It's not like milky chocolate. It's a yeah. darker, richer. Oh, okay, uh, that's interesting. Chocolate. A lot of them will go for that sort of milky chocolate, like a yes. chocolate, milky chocolate uh, mm -hmm. milkshake type thing uh, approach, mm -hmm. don't they? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so I think this one hides chocolate. it better, basically. That's why that's that's what it comes yeah. to. Yeah. And this one is like that. I really enjoy. Like, uh, if anyone has the amber light, the dark, the balanced milkshake, or the keto one, they have a really dark, rich, and uh, sometimes maybe overbearing for some people. Some of my friends have told me it's a little bit too much, but this one is a bit of it like that. It has like Belgian chocolate, darker, wow. richer taste, which hides the aftertaste much better and only comes in the, at the at the end. So uh, I think nutritionally they're really good. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll know more when I do the full review. Uh, they're natural sweetener as well, so they don't have sucralose either. So it might be a, the stevia touch a little bit, um, stevia touch maybe uh yeah so i'll i'll look i look forward to fully look and dive into the nutrition and dive into all the facts the initial impression is the taste is okay but there's definitely better tasting uh yeah. shakes out there unfortunately because okay. you know otherwise lovely presentation they'd have tons of product um you know i was very impressed by everything else like, you know the first impression was really good uh, i was a bit maybe the expectations were yeah really maybe high, you know, maybe things. yeah you know I so, think, well you know it's it, you know competition is good and you know people say you know uh you know a tide right you know a boat is raised by you know a high tide all boats are raised by the same tide so think, you know as competition yeah, yeah. pushes you know uh, it's getting people, harder you know, development of flavors sure. and jimmy joy really try to go with and just offer you a variety of flavors i mean you know they they have that bar pizza flavored bar which is crazy in fact it you is. can tell how popular it is here because I, I get loads of bars from them now and then because my daughter really likes them but the ones oh, that are nice. left in the, the uneaten are the oh. are the pizza ones because because you're going to go through all the other flavor ones before you before you go, you know, which one am I going to have today? And the poor old pizza mm -hmm. one is the one that gets sort of picked oh, last, okay. you know. Yeah, I didn't, right. I didn't just, enjoy it just, as much. It's just a mad, it's just like... Tomato, you know, it's, it's like it's, tomato or whatever. There's like some kind of with bread herby, sticks. Yeah, 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 just, yeah. Bread, it's got that kind of, yeah, like a tomato flavoured bread stick. It's yeah. French, it's like a bit French in the... Yeah, in yeah. The, in although the taste, not as good uh, as when I first tried the feed, which uh, which shouldn't, uh, from, from France, the yes, feed product. from France, yeah. And I thought, you know this shouldn't work like it it's it savory like you you've, you've you've had your vanilla shakes and you've had your chocolate shakes and your banana mm -hmm. shake type things mm -hmm. and then this company called feed come up and they're doing provincial mushroom or provincial tomato really flavor. good actually i yeah. really enjoyed that one. yeah and i was like this this sounds wrong but it yeah, was like for us wow it, mm -hmm. it it really blew my mind like at, you know, this is like a disclaimer you know, for advanced flavor. users only. Yeah, for advanced users only. You yeah, need to have a very yeah. open mind in order to yeah. drink this. Yeah, yeah, but it. Well, you know exactly. Oh, no, it definitely works. Surprised, it worked. No, no. And um, yeah, was, that that was very is, interesting. Uh, they got a lot of new products since product I last. Was, yeah. yeah, since I last tried feed, I can't get yeah, it. Well, in, uh, I can't get it in the UK now. Oh really? They uh, oh they discontinued. A lot of issues are coming with the Brexit. Brexit uh, for, for yeah. those that don't, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone's aware. But yeah. you know, after Jim, like, Jimmy Joy had issues. So the beginning of the year uh, after, after had Brexit, issues. 
um yeah so uh all the big the companies have work issues through it now but yeah there's yes. there been a lot of impacts and stuff like that and talking about that, so, yeah, maybe we'll go on some of the news and stuff because there's so many yeah. products out there and we're going to cover them in oh, other we'll shows. talk about them there's so many uh, like, yeah, i like i skip we'll, so many as well myself yeah um, and we'll we'll talk about some of the developments like i mentioned the hot mm-hmm. and savory uh mm-hmm. and stuff like that so one of them was uh from huel so the mac and cheese mac now and cheese, the news yeah. front has gone so that was released a few months ago, but now, yeah, what the last couple of weeks is now available in the in the US. Yeah, I think it was it? last week. Uh, I yeah. haven't tried the mac and cheese. I tried the original through flavors and then something else along the line. I can't remember. Uh, yeah. But the mac and cheese really hit home. Uh, I don't yeah. know. You've tried it personally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think about it? I really liked it. Really liked it. Yeah. It, it, it uh, worked. It worked. Oh. <laughs> you know. Um. um you know, is as I said in my review. You know, is it like is it like the best mac and cheese you've ever had in your life? No, of course it's not. It's, of course, you know it can't help to be that. Mm-hmm. It's trying to give you the sense of a mac and cheese while well, uh, still being healthy without cheese. You know that's why it's mac and cheese with a Z. You know, it, oh, uh, you know that's the point. Um, mm-hmm. It hasn't got cheese in it, um, but it it works really it's, well. And as as vegan. it kind of. Yeah, if you like a you know, uh, you know a pot meal, as it were, mm-hmm. or uh, and it re- it really quickly, it it it's not it's not just the taste; it's also the texture of some of the mm-hmm. some of the pasta has got that as though it's been okay. under the grill, you know, like a proper mac and cheese, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. cook it, and then you put it under the grill to finish it off, and then some of the, the last pasta gets touch. a bit sort of uh, crunchy and nice and and there's elements of that in it so they they i think they've done really really well is it mm-hmm. is it like the best mac and cheese you're gonna have no as i said no but they've done really well and as as a warm savory meal um so i'm interested to see yeah now as i say now that is launched in the u.s so if yes. you are a fan of the huel in the u.s and the hot and savory range definitely uh check that out um yeah. uh, For those other, who don't know. other things no, I was going to say, for those who don't know, yeah, the hot and savory is basically a line in Huel where you just add uh, hot yeah. water from a kettle or, yeah. you know, you warm up the water. Or you put add it in the microwave, yeah, it, yeah. Or put it in the oh, microwave. Yeah. Five minutes, you're done. Uh, they have a Mexican chili, yeah. Thai green curry. Um, yeah, yeah I know I think it's five. And actually, yeah. it might be six. They do, or sweet, more they do a sweet and sour, but in the US, okay. they call it yellow curry. Oh, okay. But in okay. the UK... <laughs> It's sweet and sour because sweet in the UK, we know what, because, you know, traditionally you'd go to the local Chinese Chinese, and and get a a sweet and sour. Uh, So (laughs) it's that kind of, uh, you know, notion in the same way that their strawberries and cream is called (laughs) something else in the US. In here, you know, strawberries and cream is something traditionally you have, you know, in the summer when you're watching Wimbledon (laughs) in Britain. So we kind of know what that means. But in America, (laughs) they call it like a strawberry sundae or something like that. Something slightly different, but it's the same thing effectively. But yeah, the hot and savory, yeah. um, I think, yeah, they do. Give it a chance, basically. Yeah, they do a tomato and herb herb. one and stuff. Yeah, Mm -hmm. which is probably the 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 blandest. And yeah, Mm -hmm. Uh, but then uh, there there's some others which are really spicy. (laughs) Chili is just about right, I think. Uh, But the mac and cheese, because it's the first. It's not the first one I have had with actual pasta in it. Okay. Um, the old Jimmy Joy ones, yes. Because the Jimmy Joy did their spoiler. Uh, yeah, they did a, their pot, and they do them like pot noodles. They come mm-hmm. in their pots, whereas the mm-hmm. Huel ones, of course, they provide you with a pot. But I find it's best to do it in a microwave. Um, that's okay. sort of, yeah. Uh, um, I think the texture just kind of works out better. But yeah, so we'll we'll talk about developments and stuff like that. Um, yeah, for sure. And so kind of, and and we'll touch on the Mana Burger as well, which I'll be having a Mana Burger for tea tomorrow. Uh, hey, well, there you um, go. Yeah, there's a lot of updates with the uh, I call them food like uh, complete foods. I mean, these are like they're inspired in in real food. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like complete. it's completely undermines on meal replacements because it's like oh, it's a meal replace. It's a burger. It's well, so that is a meal. Yeah, you know? Mana- <laughs> It's crazy. The other news was that the Mana Burger is uh, before it was, it was only available in Czech Republic and Germany yes. and Slovakia, and I, it has to do everything with logistics. This is a product that comes frozen. Yes. So, you know, it needs to be really fast shipping. 
Yeah. But now it's available in whole Europe, and I think I guess the UK as well. Yes, so uh, they've so now it's started. Useless. So they they were fortunate. They sent it to me partly as of a trial run as well, just to see, make mm -hmm. sure it got here okay. So I was lucky mm -hmm. enough to to have it, and it comes. They use um, dry ice mm -hmm. uh, in the in the packaging, um, uh, and it. and it yeah it came. It was it was frozen solid when it arrived. So. Uh, you know, hats off to them. They've sort of managed to to conquer that. And you, yeah, and you put it straight in the freezer, and then, like any burger, you so you defrost it overnight. Whether it's just take take what you want, you know, you're going to have the next day. Take it out of the freezer, put it in the fridge, whatever. Defrost it overnight, and then you cook it three minutes uh, each side. Add what you want, you're and you're, and you're done. So, uh, but yeah, so they've started shipping now. It's quite expensive because, as you it say, is. logistics. Um, so in order to make it worth their while, I think you have to order quite a lot. And, and, and I don't know how they're going to solve that problem because other than making a loss initially to get people in, uh, to try it, but it's just, as you say, you, they've got to ship it to you frozen. So it's effectively coming yeah. from the Czech Republic all the way to the UK and it's got it's to a remain, long way. yeah, it's got to remain frozen and plus all the checks and stuff like that. So um, um, but if you, know, you if you get a not... chance, uh, definitely mm -hmm. check out the review. But we'll talk about it more on on yeah, other shows. But um, yeah, so that's that's exciting you... now that that's available. The other thing as well, actually, talking of Mana, mm -hmm. um, you can now order the Mana products off Amazon. Oh, uh, okay. As well. So if you don't want to go to, I'm not sure why you wouldn't necessarily want to go to Mana Direct. Yeah, their but, prices uh, usually on the original website as well. Uh, um it's a, i think it's the same I, I think it's the same okay yeah but i think it's about the same the same price but um okay, they've good. started um using amazon as well now um mm -hmm. so i've tried that as well i've ordered it from amazon um mm -hmm. it took a little longer i think actually ironically enough but uh, they they may not have had any it depends what sort of stock levels they they had in amazon i guess these um, companies or, or are shopping, both right. in the US and in the U Europe. They're like the meal replacement, like because they're used to be uh, dealing directly with the consumer. Yeah. Huel, Mana, Soylent, they have superb uh, shipping terms usually, you know. Yeah. In Huel, the UK, next day. Huel is next day. As soon as they say, so, we'll send you some out, yeah, we'll send you some stuff out, whatever. And then I get the order through an email saying, you know, you've just ordered this stuff. And then, yeah, next day. Uh, it's couriered. It's there. It's really, really good. And even with Mana coming from the Czech Republic, only I mean, it takes usually less than a week. Yeah, um, and, and so in, even really in the US, I think they have really good terms. Both yeah. the companies, uh, even Jimmy Joy and other companies. So you know, this fast shipping is uh, usually very good. Like, very good in all for all companies across both uh, both continents. Uh, actually, you, you were talking of. Yeah, I was going to say about the sales. Do you, are you you um, do we think we are there any sales you're aware of since we're coming up to Black Friday? Well, I was going to say first of all, will you will need the sales of Black Friday, and I know they're going to be because historically they've been right. sales soil. Uh, I don't know about soil and uh, sated, uh, super body fuel, keto chow. These are U.S. brands. They all do. Uh, the old Black Friday deals. I right. tend to list them on okay. my website. I tend to have a special, uh, a special uh, uh, page for that day. You will see in the front page, latestfuels.com, and it will be in the front page. In Europe, uh, I know Saturo tends to that say Mana did it. Uh, Jimmy Joy might do it. Huel doesn't tend to do it, so I think Huel is one of the few who won't, who might not do it. And then other companies like uh, the Protein Works, like that we we're talking about. They're usually very aggressive. Yeah, uh, they tend to have really good deals. I think uh, you know up to eighty percent, uh, depending where and what timing you go through. So I would recommend checking out the complete three hundred and sixty meal or the diet meals. Uh, I personally like them. Uh, they're a bit sweet, but I personally quite like them. Uh, White food might have a deal as well, uh, and some small other companies as well might have Black Friday deals ranging like Jake, another company that oh, yes. we can talk about in the future. Yeah. They tend to have usually the the standard ones. They tend to have like about ten to twenty percent discount. Um, the most aggressive one will run on like fifty percent in certain products. So definitely, definitely be an aware. opportunity to try to try some stuff mm -hmm. if you've not tried it before. Definitely, and For it's sure. interesting at talking of prices. And I think we'll talk about it on on another show. But we'll mention it yep. here is that we've seen some price increases 
uh, especially in Europe now, whether or especially in the UK. Now, whether this is yep. the, a, a byproduct of, of Brexit because there's been other things in the UK in which prices have gone up because because of it, or you know, cost because given the competition, you'd expect to see prices come down. Oddly enough, so yeah. um, um, you know, given the yeah. fact that there's more adoption of the product, yeah. you might expect you know the exactly. costs to go down. Yeah, uh, there's so it's interesting. Rapidly speaking about it, maybe as uh, uh, there's two points. I think one is the whole logistics, the worldwide logistics. Everyone's yeah. talking about supply yeah. shortage, about everything. Wood is in shortage. Chips are in shortage. You know, yeah, and even yeah. some of the prime ingredients are in shortage. Track track lord, you know, track drivers are in shortage. You know, so everything is yeah. in shortage. So that's one of the issues. Yeah. And the second one, and Hugh was making this point, is that these brands have not, many of these brands have not raised their prices in a very long time. Yeah. So, you know. It's, yeah. So they think it's okay. Still, so we'll touch, we'll touch, certainly touch on that. So, well, I think we're, we're going to call that a show. I think that's a show. Yeah. It's been a long I mean, one. Yeah. Eh? I think it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, you know, there's a lot to, a lot to cover and it's a, a, our opening show. So I hope, I hope people who are watching this, you've enjoyed it. Put any comments down below if if you yep. do. If you know, if you're watching this on the YouTube and stuff, obviously make sure you any subscribe. feedback as well. Very welcome. Yeah. yeah, make sure you subscribe, toggle that notification bell so you know when we go live with content like this and hit the likes because hey, we like it, YouTube likes it, and it helps people like you find content like this. And it, and if you're listening on listening on the podcast, then make sure you check out the YouTube channel as well. Uh, and uh, www.latestfuels.com as well uh, for probably the most comprehensive kind of list of reviews of as probably 99% of all products that are uh, available. Uh, Any's probably done a review <laughs> of it and it's on uh, the latest, uh, as I say, latestfuels.com. So make sure you check that out. Um, so, well, so... Thank you for listening. I hope you appreciate it. As I say, sending any comments uh, that you want us to talk about or anything like that on future shows. And hopefully we'll see you on those future shows. And so it's a goodbye from me. Yeah, peace. And it's a good night. <laughs> peace. Peace out, people. Peace uh, out. Yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. And we'll see you around with a new episode very, very soon. Thank you. <laughs>